Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks, and today we're going to follow up our unboxing of the Unihertz tank with a setup video where we're going to go through the setup in details and provide you with some insights of my first impressions of the device in actual function. So let's start off by looking at the device from the front, having the, the dodge at the top left hand corner of the screen and at the top of the device above the dot there's a little infrared hole and this is a little sim tray which you don't need a you don't need a sim ejection tool to get to so this is a handy little sim tray with sim 1 and sim 2 because this is a two sim physical device i'm going to pop my sim 1 in here and I'll probably put a SIM 2 in when we get to the States next week and then pop this tray back in. There we go, it's this way around. So that's safely in place. The device is now pre turning on after I long press that power button fingerprint reader on the side of the device. Volume buttons are here. They actually have a nice little bit of texture on them. So you can tell the difference between the fingerprint scanner power button and the two volume rockers. So. Let's go through the setup of the Unihertz tank. So I'm going to select English, but we are going to select English United Kingdom. That's where I am. I like my spelling a bit more complicated. Let's start with the setup. First thing, I'm going to have to connect to my Wi-Fi. Okay, so that's the Wi-Fi now connected to the internet. And it says you're getting your phone ready. Give it a few moments to connect to Wi-Fi and do its usual checks. Now, at this point in time, uh, it's now uh, it's now on Saturday afternoon. I'm at 100% battery. I will be topping this up before I uh, travel next week and see how long I need to 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 take to need to recharge the device because that 22,000 milliamp power, that super chunky smartphone is supposed to be impressive. So I'm not going to copy any data from another device. I'm treating this smartphone as a brand new one and just going to log in with my, my Google account. Okay then, so I'll need to go and use two-factor authentication to approve this transaction. I will do that on my Nokia G22. If you haven't already watched our content on that device, go ahead and do so. And then handy next screen from uh, Google here, asking who will be using this device. This is a new feature in, set up in, in setting up uh, Google friendly Android devices. This gives you the option to say, I'll be using this myself or a child will be using it. So you can have parental controls and more importantly, account management controls. But in this case, I trust myself, even though I probably need adult supervision, I'll do it myself. So as usual in Google, we trust, uh, we're happy to give them all the data they ask for in exchange for better services and more importantly, less ads. Uh, the, the less ads you get, the more relevant they are, therefore the better for everyone. Now let's set up a pin for security. Okay then, so that is the pin set up. Next, it's offering the option to unlock with your face. Uh, so let's see how that works. It's giving us a quick guide on how to do that. And that's pretty snappy. Next up, fingerprint unlock. So just as with other devices we've seen, this is a fingerprint power button where I'm going to put my finger, in this case, my thumb on the sensor to unlock it. And it's going to take a while to train that button. The secret here is to not actually press the button so that it clicks. Just gently place your finger or your thumb on the sensor without actually pressing the power button. And that's that. Great. So we've got three ways of unlocking the device. Now next up, Google Assistant. Yes, in Google we trust. 
I've done this many, many times, uh, not just for Tech Travel Geeks, but per for personal devices. So voice match should not need to capture my voice again. And there we go. Then final part of the setup, do we want to set up another email account, change font size, change wallpaper, control information on lock screen or add in another fingerprint? I would say no, I'm quite happy with my setup as it is. Here we are. This is the lovely display of the Unihertz tank. It is a nice, vibrant, full HD plus display from Unihertz with a cutout for the selfie camera, the dotch up there. Now, as we turn the device on, there's already a system update available. It's a relatively small 10 megabyte update, but nice to see that as the Unihertz tank comes out of the box, it's already getting some love from uh, it's already getting some love from Unihertz. And this will bring us up to a more recent security patch from Google. Now the release date of this software is the 5th of January, 2023. That's the signature. We'll let that go on in the background. Now, the launcher to the Unihertz tank is a simple, pretty much stock Android or a Google-like experience with an app drawer with all your apps. And as you can see, there's pretty much no bloatware on this device. And to the left, you have your Google feed, which will give you relevant news, articles, alerts, and so forth. But looking at the apps pre-installed, obviously these are all Google apps. Uh, so you get Google messaging for text message management, maps, Gmail, calendar, everything is, is the Google stuff. With the addition of a SIM toolkit, a toolbox for very specific Unihertz tank uh, things, such as a bubble level, uh, height measure, plumb bob, uh, protractor, underwater camera, all sorts of really interesting stuff. Um, flashlight, let's see, is this the, the incredible flashlight? No. So this will, flashlight control, is controlled by software and will give you that little uh, LED light, which for most people in torch conditions is exactly what they need. Whereas on the left hand side of the device, you have one red quick action button and a slightly recessed one for that massive multi-lumen lamp panel that's there. So just to give you an idea, this is your standard flashlight. And if I long press this one, I'll probably destroy the sensor on my camera. Ah! Yep, that's daylight. Well, there you go. Just give my eyesight a few moments to recover. Great. Okay, so um, as I said, in terms of flashlights, you're well covered here. You have a 22,000 milliamp hour power bank battery in, in this phone. It's ridiculous. It's probably going to spur a series of jokes about the device. So first things first, let's see what updates are available. 26 updates out of the box. And the good thing is I'm connected to a fast internet connection. Also, the Unihertz tank has a decent uh, terms, terms of connectivity, both via network and via uh, Wi-Fi. And with the eight gigabytes of RAM built in, you should have uh, very few bottlenecks uh, in terms of its performance. So as you can see, we're already downloading and installing apps. There's a few pending. Uh, and as that goes on in the background, we can go back to our home screen. Let's have a look at the settings. So it's obviously suggesting that we finish setting up our tank. We've just done that, uh, but let's see what they're suggesting we do. So it says getting your phone ready. Just a few moments. I think it's just going to repeat the offer of uh, performing certain updates uh, to the device. So I don't want to copy the data. We've already just told the phone not to do that. Is there anything else we want to do? No, thanks. So that was pretty much just a, a check in to see if we did want to do any of that. We don't and that's done. So notification shades looks pretty decent. 
uh, it works well. It's a, quite a fluid experience. That's probably down to the fact that the Unihertz tank is running on a newer MediaTek chipset. I believe this is the MediaTek uh, Helio G99, uh, which is a pretty capable chipset. Now let's check in on the Google Play Store. Still, apps are installing. It is happening in the background. But whilst we're here, we'll just add our few apps that we usually need. CPU-Z, I'm definitely going to install that. I'm going to search for Telegram, which is my messaging service of choice. Oh yeah, we'll definitely want Instagram, Google Wallet. I'm afraid that if I drop this on one of the, the, the uh, retail credit card scanners, I might actually break things. What else? Yes, we love a little bit of TikTok here. Uh, apparently, when paired with weather balloons, it works great. Or so I'm told. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to maybe do some shopping on the go with Amazon. We want to watch Disney Plus videos, Amazon Prime video. Uh, what else? I think that's, that's it. Let's see if Netflix is available. Netflix is quite choosy about what devices it allows to be installed on. In this case, it does allow to be installed on here. Oh yes, Audible for audiobooks, definitely. Do we say that's installing? Yes, that's installing. What else? Few games here, but nothing I'm particularly interested in. Okay, so we've got a few. Uh, next up, we'll need, obviously, Messenger, because I do have friends and family who use Messenger. So I'll need to install that. The Facebook. I'm choosing not to install Twitter on the device. I'm reducing my use of Twitter significantly. Uh, I really want to stay away from that. Now we'll definitely install the BBC iPlayer, Amazon Alexa. I shouldn't have said that word. Uh, yeah, AliExpress. Just get all those apps installed. And whilst these are installing, you'll see that they'll appear in the Unihertz launcher in a grey state because they haven't fully installed just yet. They're going to come around. Um, and whilst we're in here, we'll go into the settings in the drop down and found out, find out a little bit more about the system. So system update, it is updated to Android 12. There is uh, a system update running in the background. So we can click check for update and we're successfully updated. That's great. So about phone, this is the Unihertz tank. Phone number I have is there. Let's see if there's a system update from here. It is actually installing in the background. So it is a separate update system from the Android native one and a little bit of extra data there. But yeah, so that seems to be it. Let's see if we've got any information on storage. So this device, reviews device provided by Unihertz has 256 gigabytes of storage, which paired with a 22,000 milliamp hour battery means you can have that Netflix and chill day uh, with, if you're willing to hold the weight for uh, plenty of time. So I don't know what the, the stats will be like of screen on time playing video back, I'm assuming it's a lot. So 256 gigs of storage, a 22,000 milliamp hour battery should be plenty for a season of, for example, Rick and Morty. Okay then, so uh, let's see how we're getting on with the updates and installed apps. Wow, this is definitely a chunky device six updates in pro progress, so we're getting there. I think this is a decent device. The fingerprint scanner, let's have a look at how that performs. Great. 
I'm liking this. I will need to get used to the significant weight and heft this device has, but I think this is a, a great chunk of a device, which, if you're interested in it, will probably be very useful to you. I like the way it has that lanyard strap built into the device, not the case. The device itself has a clip for a lanyard. To get its waterproof rating, to get that IP67 rating, it has a little rubber seal at the bottom for USB Type-C for charging and a courage board. Yes, the Unihertz tank has, in this case, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Great to see, and it clicks closed. So, now that we've had a look at the key things, just, just the usual housekeeping. The Unihertz tank does have NFC. It can be used for uh, payments and public transit and any other service that uses that. It's capable of charging that 22,000 milliamp hour battery at 66 watts. And according to, uh, according to Unihertz, you charge this device from empty, from 0% battery to 90% battery in around about two hours, which is impressive. But I suppose that's similar to the 66 watt charging we've seen on Honor smartphones in the back. Right, let's just quickly talk about the cameras on the back here. The main camera, the central one, the bigger one of the three, is a 108 megapixel camera. There's a two megapixel macro camera, and there's this 20 megapixel camera, which is a night vision one. Below the 20 megapixel camera, there's two infrared emitters so that you can get those nighttime shots of bats or uh, bed bugs in cheap hotels as you travel with the Unihertz tank. Right, um, obviously we, I said we have IP68 rating and MIL standard 810H. Now I don't know exactly what that means, but it's impressive on paper. Let's see if that works uh, in day-to-day -day use. So, first impressions, very, very positive. It will take a while to get used to the heft of this device and its, and its size. The MediaTek chipset is the MediaTek 6789. To you and me, that's the MediaTek Helio G99. So it should be capable of playing games like Call of Duty, just be warned, if you start rage quitting the gate, your gaming sessions, don't throw this phone. You're much, much more likely to injure someone when you do so. Anyway, uh, I'll wrap up this video. Uh, thank you, thanking you for watching. If you want to see the unboxing and see what comes in the box with the Unihertz tank, please do check out that video. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. Have that notification bell turned on for our upcoming videos, which are travel-centric, uh, upcoming videos also of the Unihertz tank, and any other gadgets and accessories we think make the travel experience better. But for now, thanks for watching, and goodbye from me.